Um, we're going to be hearing from a company that is creating the next wave of plant-based foods made from regenerative aquaculture. Um, please welcome Courtney from Akua. Hey everyone, uh, thank you so much. I'm Courtney Boyd Myers and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Akua. We're on a mission to create a new market in the Western world for regenerative foods that are made from ocean farmed sea greens. All of our products are 100% plant-based, allergen-free and made from clean label ingredients that support human health. They're developed from regenerative aquaculture practices, never wild harvested, that produce carbon negative foods that can actually help combat climate change. And we're one of the only seaweed companies on the market that's utilizing kelp from the United States, supporting our local coastal communities. So what's kelp and what's our impact? Kelp is a brown macroalgae and it's grown in a regenerative aquaculture practice that sequesters carbon and nitrogen because the kelp, it's growing via photosynthesis. So it's sequestering carbon and nitrogen, helping to reverse ocean acidification. It's a zero input crop, what we would call a future food, because it doesn't require fresh water, dry land, fertilizer, or feed to grow, which is probably very different from most things that you've had to eat or drink today. We're one of the first companies to utilize this US-based supply chain, and also one of the first companies in the world to create neat alternative products from seaweed. Last year, just to give you an idea of our impact, we used 40,000 pounds of kelp. This sequestered 2,000 pounds, or sorry, 2,000 pounds, one ton of carbon from our sea. Our first product, kelp jerky. And like I said, this is the uh, one of the fastest growing categories right now in snacks. Plant-based meat snacks are growing 40% year over year. We grew about 180% from 2019 to 2020. We had crazy growth during COVID and now we're growing about 20% monthly. We're with 60 retailers nationwide, sold direct to consumer, sold with great platforms like Thrive Market, Juice Press Grocery, and Amazon. We really believe this is one of the best nutritional profiles in healthy snacks, 10 grams of protein, 10 grams of fiber. Really all of our products are made for true label turners. Last year, we won Time Magazine Best Invention of the Year for Sustainability. This year, we won Fast Company World Changing Idea. If we ever have a glass of wine together, I'll let you know how we got this awesome quote from Richard Branson on kelp jerky too. Product roadmap, kelp jerky, we're just getting started. All of our products at Akua are made from a unique blend of algae, fungi, and pea protein. We have an incredible distribution partner who basically approached us at the start of the year and said, look, we have an $800 million a year business of frozen foods, beef, chicken, and seafood, and we don't have a vegan option. Let's do something center of plate together. So at the start of the year, we started working on our kelp burger, and we've been secretly selling it all summer long, and we're preparing for our fall launch. We're also launching kelp spices, and looking forward, we've got kelp nuggets on the books, kelp crab cakes, kelp sausages, and kelp balls, which are kelp meatballs. So further, just expanding that plant-based foods platform. We're the only vegan burger leveraging the natural umami bomb flavor of kelp and mushrooms. We have a superior nutritional profile to any vegan burger on the market, including Beyond and Impossible. And we're made with love and not in a lab. In terms of our launch strategy, we're selling direct to consumer. In fact, we've sold to over 500 consumers this summer in a secret kelp beta burger launch. Um, we have our distribution partners lined up on the East and the West Coast. We just launched in our first restaurant in LA. The only way you can buy the kelp burger right now is if you DM me for the secret link. We're kind of building that buzz, but we are anticipating a fall launch as soon as we have our sustainable packaging figured out. Um, just to let you guys know, the average customer rating on our kelp burger so far has been a 9.4. We are so excited about bringing this product to market. And for a lot of reasons, we believe we're just dipping our toe into a new blue-green ocean. I don't think that there's anyone in this room that's going to disagree with me that plant-based meats are on the rise. COVID has only supported this. It's a $5 billion market currently, and it's growing at 15% year over year. Something that's also really interesting to think about is in Asian cultures, seaweed makes up 10 to 15% of a daily person's diet. And here in the Western world, we don't eat it at all. Meanwhile, when you look at categories like nori sheets and other like clear kelp noodles, those categories are growing 30% year over year. So the appetite for seaweed in the Western world is definitely there, but we just have a lot of education and marketing to do to create that market. But hey, no one knew about kale until 2012. So we've got our work cut out for us with kelp, but we'll get there. 
digitally native. So we were really lucky when COVID hit because we'd been about 90% direct to consumer in terms of our business. Now we're about 80% of our sales are from direct to, direct -to consumer. Um, more and more people are comfortable buying online, even frozen products like the kelp burger. And then again, don't, you know, preaching to the choir here, but sustainable eating is on the rise. And I was really happy to see some studies that came out that even in the midst of COVID, um, this number in terms of uh, consumers wanting to identify with their environmental standards, that percentage of consumers has also increased this year. Our team, so myself, I've worked for food companies like Four Sigmatic, and I have spent a long time in tech building out startups. So, you know, no uh, stranger to the hard work that it takes to build a company. My co-founder, same thing. He's worked both on corporate and with startups. He does R&D, COO, CFO, I'm CEO, CMO. And we have one employee right now who's amazing, who works across sales and operations. Our extended team is why we've been able to stay so lean. Almost all of our investors are founders of food companies, the founders of Four Sigmatic, Smarty Pants Vitamins, Blue Bottle Coffee. We have amazing advisors like Susan Rockefeller. We have amazing partners too that have, have really um, helped us get to where we're going. So speaking of where we're going, we're raising $750,000 right now to scale. It's a convertible debt note to fund 18 months plus of runway. Really investing in our team, operations, logistics, sales talent to just continue that, um, marketing, advertising. I mentioned that, you know, a big part of our mission is the educational piece around what it means to eat seaweed, why it's a healthy food for you and for the planet too. Um, and then continued R&D on our future products. Uh, it's a 20% discount, five and a half million dollar cap. We're closing really soon. So this is definitely a great time to be pitching. Uh, please get in touch with me if you're interested. I also wanted to shout out, because this is such a cool group, that we are seeking uh, an amazing advisor, potential board member to join our team, someone who's successfully built and scaled a meat alternative company. Awesome. Thank you yeah. so much, Courtney. That was such a great pitch. And um, I, I got to get that code so I can try that burger. That sounds amazing. Um, so let's bring our, our uh, judges on for some questions. Hey, Courtney. Great presentation. Love your energy. Um, can really feel the momentum that the... Um, oh, did we lose her? Um, <laughs> Uh, well, anyway, uh, could really feel the momentum that your company um, has gained. Um, and so super congratulations on that. Um, I have to admit to not knowing that much about seaweed and its production. Um, and I wonder if you could just talk to some of the potential risks with related to climate change, because I know some of the oyster folks um, have had some issues recently here on the West Coast. Yeah. yeah. Thankfully, our crop can't catch on fire. So bonus there. Um, we are only based on the East Coast. Um, right now, our backup supply chains, if we ever needed them, are in Alaska. California actually has not made kelp farming legal. I don't really know why. There's a lot of rumors and of why we can get into that at a later date. Um, but our supply chain in Maine is, is really solid. I mean, the Maine economy like I think it's over like 60% is from the seafood industry. So the environmental protections they've put around those waters are, are truly incredible. That being said, of course, rising sea temperatures are, are an issue. And that's kind of the cool thing about kelp farming is that the more kelp farms we put in, potentially the, the lower we can bring those sea temperatures. So, you know, I think we're at risk just the way any food company is at risk, just because we're new doesn't make us riskier. You know, they've been cultivating seaweeds for thousands of years in Asia. This is not like we're reinventing the wheel. You know, we're just bringing it to the Western world and introducing it here to the U.S. market. Courtney, great, great presentation. Um, love the, the brand image and uh, the Instagram looks great. <laughs> All the social media looks great. Um, I spent you... too much time on that for a CEO, so thank you. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that, you've got to get all the DMs from there. Um, <laughs> Um, can you talk a bit about just how you drive trial, given that kelp is, you know, we eat nori, but, but kelp is a little bit different. Um, and then also, given that you've done a lot of DTC, can you talk, touch upon just the retention rates and repeat purchases? Yeah, of course. So, well, first of all, how we drive trial to answer your first question, we rely a lot on word of mouth, influencer marketing. We don't pay influencers, but just... You, I mean, you'd be amazed, all the food founders in this room know it, how many people reach out to you for free products every day. And so, you know, we do work with a lot of people who are going to be our, we call them our, our mermaid street team. And so we have, you know, dozens of people in LA, San Francisco, New York, Chicago, who are, you know, helping us build this brand both online and in retail. Um, and then in terms of repeat purchasing behavior, we're at about 30%. So we would like it to be higher, but 
we're happy it's not lower. Um, and, and definitely part of that is because we just had this crazy inbound of like COVID shoppers in this spring and they kind of lowered our number a little bit, but, um, yeah, we're, we're happy awesome. with 30%. Thank you so much again, Courtney. Um, thank you for those questions.